Hello my friends, welcome to another travel vlog, which again, I'm coming to you from the future because I have been home for a few days now. I've been back from Copenhagen, but I never got the chance to check in with you guys beforehand, which is kind of because it was more of a spontaneous, I want to say last minute trip, but I do have to clarify, it wasn't last minute for most people but it was pretty last minute for me because I like to be extremely organized. We had to take care of the baby. We had to drop him off at the doggy daycare, which this was his first time staying somewhere without us overnight. So I was really nervous about that. I always had to get him ready. I had to pack all his food because he's on a special diet. I had to pack. I had to figure out what we're going to do because I had never been to Copenhagen before. So it was kind of hectic. I had to finish work. I had to film for you guys, edit. The whole ordeal but anyway we made it back but unfortunately i never got the chance to check in with you guys beforehand and even in copenhagen i didn't film i mean i filmed a lot but i never really had some proper time to talk to you guys because we ended up getting so busy while we were there which i'm really grateful for because now i can show you a ton of different things that we got to see i have plenty of recommendations for you not only when it comes to shopping but also going to restaurants going to see museums going to explore Copenhagen. So if you're planning a trip up to Copenhagen, if you know anyone who's planning a trip there, this vlog is definitely for you because obviously we did plenty of shopping, which you'll see in an upcoming unboxing, but I also got to explore quite a few really interesting restaurants. I didn't know this prior to going there, but Copenhagen is kind of the capital of fine dining or one of the capitals of fine dining. So we definitely went to plenty of interesting restaurants, which I have to be honest about this, I am not a foodie by any means. I could easily live without eating weird things and going to fine dining restaurants. I mean, I would be a happy camper if I got to eat almond butter toast and grilled chicken tenders for the rest of my life. I really don't need anything more than that. But I love going for the experience and obviously I'm incredibly grateful that I had the chance to go to all these incredible restaurants, which are just some of the best in the world. So if you love food, this vlog is definitely for you. But we also went shopping, we went to Chanel, we went to RMS, we went to the biggest, most luxurious department store in Copenhagen, which you will all see in this vlog. And then I didn't take that many outfits of the day shots and videos for you guys for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was insanely cold. And number two, I didn't have that much time. So basically I was going back and forth between these two pieces that I took with me alongside with many, many Uniqlo thermal layers because I was kind of unprepared for how cold it was. But the two things that I took and got plenty of wear out of were my m and cashmere, which I showed you guys. I think I showed this to you. It must have been my London unboxing, which if you haven't seen, I'll make sure to link that down below for you. And it's actually great that I'm getting to talk to you guys about this again, because I promised you that I would report back. And I'm happy to say that I love this thing. If you're looking for a more affordable cashmere sweater, don't sleep on these. I mean, I've been wearing these consistently for the past two weeks and I'm seeing these because I bought two of them. I bought one in medium and I bought one in small, both of which I love equally. The reason I got in, got two different sizes is because I wanted to play around with the fits because these are a little bit thinner. I wanted to have one that is a little bit more fitted and then one that is just a tiny bit more oversized. And I have been wearing these. I have also washed these and they are as good as new. So if you've never tried m and Cashmere, definitely give them a try. I actually ordered a few more of them, which I didn't realize, but m and actually ships worldwide. So if they're doing any special deals for Black Friday, maybe check out my info box. If I can find anything, I'll make sure to link it down below for you. But I have been loving this thing and it was the perfect, perfect layering piece over a few layers of Uniqlo Thermal. And then the other cashmere that I took was my new Hermes cashmere, which I shared with you guys also in a previous unboxing. And I do love this thing. It's incredibly luxurious, soft and plush. But considering that this is, I wanna say 15 times the price of this, I really wouldn't go for this. I would just pick this up in a few different colors, which doesn't mean that I don't love this, but now that I have these m and cashmeres, I think I'll just continue buying these in different colors because I do love these. So. Both of these I was incredibly happy with. I did take a few different options, but I really didn't get that much wear out of them. I took my Burberry trench, which 
didn't do much for me so that wasn't a great idea i took i think i took a canada goose jacket which let's be honest those are the warmest things but they are not the most flattering and then i also took a Saint Laurent fur jacket which i loved but honestly i needed that canada goose jacket because that was the warmest thing that i had with me and it was pretty cold especially exploring also one more thing that i have to say about copenhagen which is just a little tip you probably want to drive because it is quite a big city i mean the distances are quite far and you can definitely walk you can definitely take public transportation but in the cold i just wasn't in the mood to walk so we ended up driving quite a lot so because of that i didn't have to layer and bundle up that much which was a great thing but if you're going to copenhagen maybe consider driving or renting a car because for us that was the most ideal way of getting around especially with how cold it was but i think these are all the things that i wanted to share with you also you will see an unboxing from me just sharing with you all the pieces that i bought in copenhagen and then a few things that i bought right before because i actually had a, an appointment at rms so i was able to pick up just a couple of last minute things but without further ado if you'd like to see what we got up to in copenhagen including all the shopping all the eating and all the cultural activities then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. We landed really early in the morning in Copenhagen, which meant that we pretty much had an extra day on our hands. After landing and getting into the city, we were able to check into our hotel almost immediately, which we stayed at the Nobis Hotel, which was nice enough. We were going back and forth between two different hotels, Nobis being one of them and the other one was Hotel d'Angleterre which we really enjoyed staying at Nobis but next time I would definitely want to give Hotel d'Angleterre a try and then after checking in we went to have lunch at this Taiwanese restaurant which was pretty decent it's definitely not the best Taiwanese food I've ever had but their popcorn chicken was outstanding and I do have to admit that it was probably the best meal that I had on this entire trip. Since her weekend was fully booked with reservations, different restaurants and bars, I definitely wanted to check out their shopping right after this lunch. So we ended up going onto their main shopping street, which in my experience, if you're going to do some shopping in Copenhagen, they make it pretty easy for you because most of their boutiques are located on the same street. So if you want to go to Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, even Cartier, they are all really, really close to each other on the exact same street. Um, make sure to put the name of the street up on the screen here, just so if you want to go shopping, you know where to find some of our favorite boutiques. I think the only exception was Dior, but everything else was right here, including this Danish furniture shop, which I stumbled upon, but they had some of the most beautiful pieces of furniture. If you like more simplistic, sort of scandy design furniture this store is definitely for you i try to take some pictures of the labels so you can see where each piece is from in case you're interested in anything but again i'll make sure to put the name of this specific danish department store up on the screen here so if you are looking for a new piece of furniture and something catches your eye here you can definitely do a bit more digging online but my two favorite pieces that i came across were this Buckley furniture it's a couch basically that I love the look and the shape of and then the other piece which was really interesting was this would you call this a love seat it's kind of a bench but it has a backing to it which seemed to come in different length in different sizes and also different finishes but my favorite was of course the one in the Buckley finish because let's be honest, I just love anything and everything Buckley. Now, obviously I did not pick up anything at this particular store, but our next stop was their luxury department store, which I want to say is called Illum. They had a ton of different stores. So they had a Balenciaga, a Prada, a Valentino boutique in here none of which I was really interested in, but of course I had to stop by Celine just to check out what they had to offer. Now this particular Celine didn't do any ready-to-wear or shoes. You will see, I think it, it is going to be in my next vlog that I went back to Illum to look at another one of their boutiques that actually carried Celine for men, but this particular store only had bags. They actually had fragrance, so I got to try every single one of their fragrances. And then they also had jewelry and of course your regular accessories. But when it came to bags, 
I have to say I really like some of these. I think they're called the Triumph bags from Celine. I think if you're looking for a really easy, everyday, casual, yet luxurious bag, any one of these bags, I think you would really enjoy. They come in a ton of different sizes, including some itty bitty baby sizes, which of course are adorable, but personally, I would much rather opt for some of their other iterations of these bags, which they have so many of. I mean, these are cute if you only want to carry around a card holder and maybe a lip balm, nothing else will fit into one of these bags but they are pretty cute but i think they have so many other much better designs some that come with chains some that come with leather straps that i feel like would be a much better investment into your collection just because you'd get a lot more wear out of them these are bags that you can really easily style in a more casual fashion but you can of course also dress them up too and then since i was already here i of course had to give their entire fragrance line another sniff for probably the third time but at this point, I just have to come to terms with the fact that they just don't have a fragrance that really suits me. I mean, there isn't one that I would find offensive, but none of them are just really me, to be honest. But speaking of fragrances, I've actually gone back to using one of my old favorites, which if you're looking for a really dark, smoky scent for fall winter, I would love for you to try that. I'll make sure to link it down below. It's from Comme de Garçon, and I much prefer that over any one of these scents and actually speaking of fragrances that didn't work for me i actually tried for the first time loeves candles which i was really really underwhelmed by each one of these candles are inspired by a different herb and they genuinely just smell like an herb there isn't an elevated touch to any one of these they are just straight up the scent of each herb that they are inspired by which i feel like if you love any one of these scents, all you have to do is chop the specific herb that you love in your kitchen or you can take it into your living room or bedroom and that will do the exact same thing that these candles would and chopping your own herbs wouldn't break the bank either. But I have to say I love the jars that these came in and since I was already at Loewe, I of course had to give some of their bags a look including this new puffy pillow bag which I love the idea of the execution not so much i also looked at some keychains which i think make the most incredible holiday gifts i feel like most people wouldn't buy themselves a designer keychain but it makes such an amazing practical gift that the person you're gifting them to would be able to use on a daily basis so i love giving keychains as gifts and loewe definitely has some really cool ones and then Again, I was blown away by this bag. Anytime I look at this bag, I just fall head over heels for it, which is the Loewe Flamenco tote bag, which if you're looking for a large tote bag to carry to work, to take to the gym, to use for traveling, a bag that looks and feels like a million bucks, but is so understated, I would love to put this particular bag that comes in a couple of different sizes on your radar. You guys know me, you know that I cannot walk past an Hermes boutique without at least stopping by for a quick browse, which is exactly what I did here. The Hermes boutique was really, really close to the department store where we had just been. They had an amazing selection of bags, obviously, none of which was for sale. And when it came to everything else, they really didn't have too much in stock, but the customer service was amazing. Everyone was incredibly nice. And they actually had quite a few little puppy creations, which I wasn't looking to buy anything for Pi because he already has everything that he could want from Hermes. In fact, there are a couple of new pieces which you'll see in an upcoming unboxing of mine. But I have to say that if you are in Copenhagen, definitely stop by their boutique. They had quite a few ready-to-wear pieces and shoes available, but nothing from the new spring-summer season, which has just launched and then after taking a quick break stopping by the christmas market and hotel d'angleterre we ended up at chanel which was our last stop of the day you'll see what i ended up picking up from chanel there are a couple of pieces that i found and i also found this bag which i think i talked to you about in my London vlog, which is basically this little Chanel leather pouch that folds out into a reusable grocery bag, which is something that I have been looking for. Not actively, I never reached out to anyone to try to hunt it down, but anytime I 
see a Chanel boutique, I would stop by and ask if they had it. And they actually had one here. But unfortunately, it was covered in all these different sort of graffiti inspired prints, which is definitely not what I was looking for. I was looking for the plain black version, which I'm going to continue looking for, but it's not something that I obviously can live without. And then before heading to dinner, I grabbed a quick bubble tea, which I went to two different bubble tea spots in Copenhagen, and I definitely preferred this one. So I'll make sure to put the name on the screen here. And then the night ended at a restaurant called Alchemist, which I believe is one of the best restaurants in the world. And I have to say, it's definitely the most insane sort of culinary experiences that I've ever had. In order to get to the restaurant, you have to walk through this abandoned sort of parking lot or like bus repair center. And then you find yourself at this abandoned building with a weird door that doesn't have a handle, that doesn't have a doorbell. It at just one point opens up in front of you and you're greeted by the team that is going to be taking care of you throughout the night. So basically you go into this restaurant and the idea is that you're served 50 impressions, they call them, some of which are different courses of obviously meals, while others are art installations or different scents and drinks, which was definitely really interesting. I would say that if you're into food, if you're into unique experiences, you definitely have to try to get a ticket, as they call them, to this restaurant. And it will definitely feel like you're being initiated into a secret society, which I don't think that's what it was all about, but it will feel like it, especially as you are walking into the restaurant. But when it comes to the food, I have to be honest, I would have much preferred a Big Mac over the food that they served here. But I guess it's all part of the experience. But I would say that if you're a foodie, you definitely have to try to get a table at this restaurant, which is going to be harder than getting a Birkin these days. But if you can, I mean, it's just a once in a lifetime experience. The next morning I started at Barry's with a quick workout, which was in a different neighborhood. So I thought I would explore that for a little bit. And it seemed to have quite a few little local boutiques and more local designers, which I stopped by Acne. Acne isn't Danish, they are Swedish, but that was kind of the closest thing that I could find to the region, which I used to be a big fan of Acne Studios these days. I mean, there isn't much that I haven't seen from them, but if you're looking into buying something from Acne, I would definitely recommend their classic scarves. I think their scarves are beautifully made. They're really reasonably priced and they come in a ton of incredible shades. What I really love about their scarves is how long they are. They are definitely scarves that you can wrap around your neck quite a few times. You can style them in different ways, but they are not overwhelming. They're not like a show. So their scarves make an incredible, not only gift, but an amazing investment piece into your collection. And then I have also been looking for an alternative to my old Celine Act coat, which Acne does have a coat that they come out with each and every single season, which isn't cashmere like my Celine one. It's made of a double-faced wool material, which this season they have, they always change what colors they come in. This season they don't have that many great colors, but I of course had to try the black one, which I liked, but I didn't love. But I still think that it would make an amazing staple for your full winter collection if you're looking for a new classic coat that you can style in a million different ways. This is definitely something that I think you should look into. And then why don't we end this part of the vlog with me having brunch, which I went to this more Danish brunch spot. That was really nice. I'm glad I got to try that. And hopefully I'll see you back here with part two of this vlog early next week. If you enjoy this vlog and you'd like to see more, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I can't wait to see you back here with part two of this vlog really, really soon.